This is Blazers All Access, an inside look at UAB basketball with head coach Andy Kennedy. Blazers All Access is presented by Viva Health, part of the UAB Health System, and by Mountain Dew. Do the do. Here's the voice of the Blazers, David Crane. UAB is getting ready for division rematches the rest of the way as Rice and North Texas come to Bartow Arena for two critical Conference USA games this weekend. We welcome you to Blazers All Access with head coach Andy Kennedy. I'm David Crane. Coach, you split two games last weekend. You remained perfect at Bartow with a win over Southern Miss last Thursday night. You didn't get off to the best of starts against the Golden Eagles. But after being tied at 37 going into intermission, it seemed like kind of a different team came out of the locker room for you. Well, the difference was defensively, we picked up our intensity. We held them to 20% in the second half. We were able to get consecutive stops, which allowed our offense to get in the open floor, which we thrive in. You mentioned 20% shooting for the Golden Eagles in the second half. Was it more schematic or execution on that end for you? I think it was a little bit of both. We did make some adjustments to some of their ball screening coverages, but the, for the most part, I just thought we were more locked in. We did a good job of contesting shots and not giving them second chance opportunities. They've got a very formidable front line. And in the first half, they were bothering us some in the mid range. Second half, we were much better. Changed our looks, kept them out of rhythm. You finished with five and double figures, including a second straight double-double from Quan Jackson. Yeah, Quan has been playing like an all-conference player. He's playing with great energy. He's making some shots. And when he's active off the glass, you know, I challenged him when Josh LeBlanc went down with the injury that we have to have our wings rebounding at a high level. And, boys, he responded. And great to see Jamal Johnson come in and have some success, knock down three threes for you in that game. He's a guy that can bring in some instant offense with his ability to make shots. Happy to see him play well. Also, he had four big rebounds. He was locked in defensively, a, a key contributor off our bench. Blazers pulled away early in the second half, led by as many as 24, and took care of the Golden Eagles with an 84-63 win here in Birmingham. Pushing into the front court, kicks to Ertel, left side, a three, up and good. Walker's got it, right side, stops, pops, a three, good. Golden Eagles by a point, top of the wheel, Johnson, catch and shoot three, count it. Outlet pass to Stevenson, run into the other end, lost the handle, Walker takes it away. Pushing it ahead, two on one, Jackson to Walker for the lay-in. Curls to the right elbow, pulls up from 15 feet and hits it. In front of the Golden Eagle bench, bad pass taken away by Quan Jackson. Ahead to Jordan Walker. He weaves through traffic down the right of the lane to the bucket on the season. 45-44, Buffin in the paint, leans in, little eight-footer up and good. Jackson, another rebound, underhands to Walker. Quickly into the forecourt with it, behind the back flip to Jackson, driving the left side, puts it up, off the glass, good. Feeds to a cutting Buffin for the two-hand slam. Surveys, dribbles out high with it, feeds it to Johnson, up top for a three, good, and a foul. And at the right elbow, into the lane, leans in, little eight foot shove shot, up and good. Dribbles it across, he'll drive, he'll lob, and Jemison with the flush. To Walker, slides left, three, up, got it. Rims out, no good. Buffin sailing in for the miss. Finds a cutting, Quan Jackson for the lay in. Bounces in the lane, Jemison, right hand hook shot, good for two more. Jordan slides left, open look at a three, and he hits it. The highlights are brought to you by Viva Health. You weren't thinking about a Medicare plan back then, but at Viva Medicare, it's been on our mind for a long time. And we know a thing or two about making Medicare easy. That's why our plans have $0 co-pays for primary care physician visits. So when the time comes to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan that focuses on the things you're passionate about, we'll be here for you. Viva Medicare. Enjoy life without the worry. Learn more at vivahealth.com slash Medicare. Legacy is what you do every day. We try not only to help people with their financial legacies, we hope that we enrich their lives and help them become better people so that that total package, at the end of the day, is something they can be proud of. We help them craft their legacy. After the win over Southern Miss, Green and Gold turned their attention to ODU. The Monarchs have been scuffling a little bit as of late, but Coach, you knew you'd be facing a big physical team up in Norfolk. You know, we thought the, the fact that the, the way the schedule had played out, having Southern Miss and then having ODU in back-to-back -back because they played 
somewhat similar with their front lines. They play through their front line. Uh, Old Dominion's like going back to early 90s basketball. A lot of high-low, a lot of duck-ins. They're pounding that ball to the post. They got two of the best front court players in our league. So we knew coming in we had to be physical. We had to be in the proper position. We call it staying up the line. Stay up the line so you're not allowed to be ducked in. Unfortunately, we didn't do a very good job of executing that. Built a seven-point lead late in the first half, but ODU, ODU rallied to score the final seven points of the half, and for the second straight game, you went into the locker room tied at 37. I thought the biggest play of the game, if you remember, we're up seven with the ball with about two to go in the half. Jelly made a poor decision in the open floor trying to lead ahead to Ronji Gordon, led to a steal and a transition basket. We then compounded that. They go to a little bit of a zone look. We had uh, K.J. Buffin in the middle of the zone, missed a tweener. We then turned it over. Mike missed a clean three in the corner. Next thing you know, as, as you said, they go on a 7-0 run, and then they kept that momentum early in the second half uh, by scoring the first four points of the half and had us on our heels the remainder of the night. Yeah, a frustrating second half. Monarchs got to the basket and either made it or made free throws in that second half, while your guys unfortunately missed some at close range. Well, we our inability to finish uh, was very, very frustrating. And then our clean looks, you know, we stat this each and every game. The right guy taking the right shot for him. We were two for 15 on clean looks, which is the lowest that our team has shot in my two years here. We had opportunities to make plays. Unfortunately, we did not come through. An uncharacteristic day in regards to turnovers and steals. ODU kind of flipped the script on you just a little bit. Well, our three magic categories, we talk about it every game, David. We need to win points off turnovers. We need to win second chance points, and we need to win the free throw line. If we can't win them all, we need to win two of the three in order to give ourselves a chance to be successful. We went 0 for 3, and as a result, took a hard loss. Monarchs grabbed the lead right out of the locker room and never trailed in the second half as UAV dropped an 81-72 decision at Chartway Arena. Take it up the left sideline for UAB, work it to the foul line, curl right of the lane, stop, lean in, tough 10-footer, he banks it in to Quan. Right of the lane to Buffin, back and down, driving in, reverse layup, and he spins and lays it in for two. Pretty move by K.J. Buffin, lobbed down the floor at the other end as Zeke Pay laid it up, got it blocked by Buffin. Walker driving the right side, throws it across the paint to Buffin, who catches, gathers, and lays it in for two. Gets a screen, slides left, lobs to Gordon in the paint, beat his defender for the easy lay-in. Get cut off, pivots, fall away, 16-footer as the shot clock expires, and it's good. Walker, top of the wheel with it. Feeds in the lane, all alone. Trey Jemison for the two-hand slam. Creeps forward, back pedals. Now pulls the trigger on an NBA three and hits it. And gathered in by Ertel. Lob ahead from Walker to Jackson, who lays it up and in. Jackson, left side, head fake, dribble drive in the lane. Puts up a runner with a right hand. Yes, and a foul. Gives to Jemison, left of the lane. Back to a cutting Quan Jackson for the lay-in. Far side of the floor, Walker's got it. Pulls up. For a three, got it. Walker racing into the front court, down the lane. He'll scoop it up and in. Dishes, left corner. Brown, open look at a three, and he hits it. Walker's got it for UAB, lobbing Jackson, catches and drops it in for two. The highlights are brought to you by Mountain Dew. Legacy is what you do every day. We try not only to help people with their financial legacies, we hope that we enrich their lives and help them become better people so that that total package, at the end of the day, is something they can be proud of. We help them craft their legacy. This segment of Blazers All Access is sponsored by Regions Bank. UAB stands at 19 and 6 overall on the year 9 and 3 in league play after the split last weekend. Here's a look at the Children's of Alabama stats for the two games. UAB not a bad shooting weekend overall, not great from 3 but outstanding at the free throw line, rebounding edge to UAB. Coach, you, you mentioned it, the, the numbers aren't terrible when you sort of look at them combined in the two games, but the second chance points, points off turnovers proved really critical for you there against Old Dominion. We were not disruptive whatsoever. It's the third, it's our third loss in conference play all on the road, and they all have a common theme. We give up 50% from the floor and we allow over 80 points. That is not who we are. If you look at our wins, we're typically holding people into the low to mid 60s. 
and, and our field goal percentage defense is in the low 40. So we have to defend. We have to be disruptive. We have to stay to our DNA in order to have success. Jordan Walker averaged 22.5 points, 7.5 assists per game. He's reached 20-plus now in 12 games this year, including nine straight. And K.J. Buffin averaged 11.5. He did have a double-double for you at Old Dominion. Yeah, and you know, we were talking about the inability to finish. You know, K.J. was on the receiving end of a number of those. His effort, he's great off the offensive glass, one of the best in our league. Our inability to finish around some size. Give ODU credit. I thought they played well. I really did. It, we didn't play very good, and I thought they played well, and typically that's a dangerous combination. But but K.J. continues to give us great effort. You know, Jelly ends up getting the 20. It wasn't the most efficient 20. People are really, really defending him in unusual ways. Some other guys are going to have to step up in those gaps. One of those that did. Our difference maker for the week is Quan Jackson. He had 11 points, 10 boards against Southern Miss. Nearly another double-double against Old Dominion, 17 points to go with eight rebounds before he fouled out. Yeah, you know, Quan's playing with that sense of sense of urgency that you like to see as a coach. We need him to finish this year strong. This segment of Blazers All Access is sponsored by Regions Bank. green and gold banners up there better wake up the seamstress they're about to get some company because this is a revival this segment of blazers all access is sponsored by Legacy Credit Union. As I mentioned, it's rematches the rest of the way in the regular season. First up, a visit from Rice on Thursday. The Owls got hot in the second half against the Blazers in Houston and went on to an 85-80 to win. Coach, how much, just in general terms, you got a rematch game. How much do you change things? How much do you sort of keep the same and wait and see how other teams do? How do you go about getting ready for a rematch? Well, what's so crazy is, is obviously Rice has got the, the same team. Their personnel has changed a bit, as has ours. Now, they're doing things a little bit differently. Uh, they're playing both of those bigs together. You know, last, last game they would play one Felder or they would come in and, and the young man off the bench was terrific for against us in game one. Now they're kind of playing them together, which changes the way that they play. Play. We're changing. We've changed a little bit as well with the loss of Josh LeBlanc. We've made some adjustments. So everybody changes and adjusts throughout the course of the season. The thing that killed us uh, at Rice gave up 85 points. They blistered us in the second half with field goal uh, percentage, and they really killed us in that high ball screen. We'll have to make some adjustments there and make sure that our guys do a much better job at the point of attack, not allowing Rice to control the possession. You've mentioned the, the formula success for UAB. It was it was the Rice game where the, the other formula for the opponent's success first showed up, wasn't it? Well, they, they spread us. They put us in the high ball screen. Um, Evie did a terrific job of making great decisions, and they shot the ball very, very well. Travis Evie, Melisel Poteet, and Carl Pierre, kind of a three-headed monster the first go-around. How do you slow them down this time? Well, as I said, we've got to do a good job against the, the ball screen, and most especially in the middle of the floor. We call it point of attack. We have to flatten the O. We can't allow them to get us on our heels, and that's what happened in game one. And as a result, you find yourself in rotations all night. They were making the extra pass and knocking down open shots. Tip time, 7 p.m. on Thursday with Stadium televising the matchup. We'll be on with pregame starting at 6.30 from Bartow Arena. Then Saturday, North Texas comes to town. Huge division showdown. 3 o'clock tip, Stadium in the house once again. Pregame will start at 2.30 on radio, and it sure would be nice to have a big crowd for both of those games. Well, we're 14-0 in Bartow Arena. Um, in order for us to continue on our quest of winning a conference championship, and that is still completely within our grasp, we need to protect home floor. Bartow's been good to us. I hope the fans come out and give us that much needed home court advantage. Good luck this weekend. Thank you, David. For head coach Andy Kennedy and all of us at the Blazer Sports Network, I'm David Crane. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you at Bartow this weekend and be back with us next time for Blazers All Access. Blazers All Access has been presented by Mountain Dew, Do the Dew, and by Viva Health, part of the UAB Health System. This has been a presentation of the Blazer Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.